In today's video, we are gonna start our series that I have called the perfect prompt principles. So basically, this is just gonna be techniques you can learn to improve your prompt game, how you can solve different problems using different techniques. So today we are gonna start with a chain of thought principle. Uh, so I'm gonna go through some examples. We are gonna use ChatGPT in this case. We're gonna solve a couple of problems. I'm just gonna go quickly through how I think about using these principles and how it can improve your output in an LLM. So you will see from these examples that we can really enhance our output just by using this. We can even solve the problem that we couldn't solve before. So I think we're just gonna get straight into it and look at the principle. And this is how kind of I think about the chain of thought principle or the chain of thought prompting. Uh, so this does not fit to every single problem you have. But if we have a kind of problem that fits this style, this uh, chain of thought, this is more like kind of like a step-by-step -step thinking. Uh, I think you will identify these problems when you see them. So then we have the option to kind of prompt this to split it into sub-problems. We just prompt it like to make a list of all the steps we have to solve before we can solve our main problem, right? And then we just do that. We just prompt it to make a list of all these problems. Then we just start by solving problem one, problem two. And when we have solved all those intermediate steps, then we can wrap it up by solving our main problem. Uh, this might seem a bit weird, but if you think about it, this is how humans solve problems too. We don't just look at the last sentences in the problem and just say, ah, it has to be that. We have to go through each step and solve like in a chain, right? And you will see that clearly now when we move on to our example. So for our first example, we are actually going to just stay on ChatGPT 3.5 because I think you can even see it better here how this chain of thought works. So maybe you have seen this problem on my channel before, but let's have a look at it. Michael is a 31 year old man from America. He's at that really famous museum in France looking at its most famous painting. However, the artist who made this painting just makes Michael think of his favorite cartoon character from his childhood. What was the country of origin of the thing that this cartoon character usually hold in his hands? So this is a kind of problem that we just can't go to at the last sentence here, right? And just say, ah, it has to be that. Because we have no way of knowing that. Because we have to solve this problem like step by step or in a chain of thought. So this is a perfect demonstration. Like if we try to solve this with ChatGPT now, so I tried five times there and I wasn't even close to solving this. So what we have to do is think a bit different uh, and I'm going to show you the prompt I'm going to use so we can actually have a chance of solving this. So here you can see we have the same problem, right? Uh, but here I go without solving the problem just yet. Think through this carefully and list systematically and in detail all the problems in the riddle that needs to be solved before we can arrive at the correct answer. Okay, so that's a good start, right? I think this kind of shows how we want to break this down into a list. So you can clearly see here that ChatGPT gives me this list here. So we need to identify Michael's location. What, what kind of uh, museum is that? We want to identify the most famous painting. The artist of the painting. We want to determine Michael's favorite cartoon character. Identify the character and determine the country of the origin of the object. So this is a perfect... Um, yeah, visualization of how you kind of can see that the list of all the steps we need to take before we can come to the final answer. So then I just prompted, okay, good, solve problem one with the highest probability you can give. So I try this variant where I always want to solve for the highest probability. Because if you're not 100% sure about something, uh, then humans also just default to thinking like, uh, it has to be that sometimes. When you're not 100% sure, you just want to give an answer that is highest probability. So here you can see uh, the highest probability is that is Michael is visiting the Louvre Museum in France. So the probability answer for problem one is that Michael is at the Louvre Museum in France. Okay, good. Solve problem two. That's going to be identifying the most famous painting. So therefore, the most famous painting in the riddle is Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Perfect. Okay, then we move on to problem three. That was like identifying the artist who made that. That should be pretty easy for a large language model, right? So that is going to be Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, we can just move on to problem four. Determine Michael's favorite cartoon character. 
And here you can see ChatGPT does not really know what to say here. Uh, it doesn't have a clear answer because the problem remains unsolved based on the information we provided. But then I tried to just go, that's okay, but provide the cartoon character with the highest probability. Again, I specify on this because I just wanted to give it like uh, the best guess or the best educated guess, right? And then it goes ahead and it's likely to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because one of them is, uh, all of them are um, uh, renamed after Renaissance artist, right? So one of them is Leonardo. So uh, we're gonna guess that the reasonable probability that the cartoon character Michael thinking of is Leonardo from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, that's good because it can't really say it's 100% sure of this. But sometimes you just gotta make an educated guess to get moving on, right? You, just, you don't, you don't want to stop here if you're gonna try to solve the problem. So we're just gonna continue to keep solving on problem 5. That's gonna be identifying the cartoon character's object. And Leonardo, he holds a pair of katanas. Or is it one katana? At least it's a katana. And that is correct. Okay. So then I just go, do you have all the info you need now to solve the problem? Yes, I all have all the information I need. Okay, go ahead, list the problems and the final solution. So here you can see we have like, a, we have the location, that's Louvre, Louvre. We have the painting, Mona Lisa, the artist. We have the cartoon character and the object is a katana. And the final solution is the country of origin of the object that the cartoon character Leonardo holds in his hand is Japan. Perfect, that is correct. So you can see now, we solved our problem by using chain of thought thinking. Uh, a problem that uh, ChatGPT, if I gave it like 100 chances, I don't think it could solve it. If we just zero shot at this prompt. By using chain of thought, we can just think through this like more step by step. And we ended up with the final and correct answer. I also wanted to do a problem over on GPT-4 or I'm on the advanced data analysis. I just prefer this model over GPT-4. That's just my personal preference, but you can just use GPT-4 too. Uh, because I wanted to see like if this kind of thinking uh, is also applicable to GPT-4, even though GPT-4 are more, uh, more accurate on these kind of problems. If I run the, um, the riddle from last problem, uh, I think it could solve it like in a zero shot. But let's take a look at the zero shot here on the problem. This is a just problem I created this morning. <laughs> so I am in my garage, I pick up a small ball and I grab a small box that is missing the bottom. I walk into my office and I put the small ball into the small box. Then I take the small box with me to the postal office. Here I put the small box into a bigger box and I send it to my friend in New York. Then I ask, where is the ball now? And GPT-4 or data, advanced data analysis answers, the ball is in the bigger box that you sent to your friend in New York. And that is like, as a human, I think, no, that can't be. Because I put the ball in a box that is missing the bottom, right? So the ball can't be in the box. So what I wanted to do is try to use this chain of thought thinking principle here on this problem and see if we get something else. So here you can see I kind of prompted it in a different way. I kind of went with this without solving the problem just yet. Think through this carefully and list systematically and in detail all the problems in the riddle that needs to be considered carefully before we can arrive at the answer that has the highest probability of being correct. Here we get kind of like all the problems we need to think about. The location of the ball, the box condition, handling and movement, transit details, and bigages. Like the riddle doesn't specify if the ball stay in the box, in the small box, when the small box was placed in the bigger box. So we have some issues kind of we need to think about here. The riddle doesn't mention the size of the ball relation to the small box. Now there's no mention of the bigger box having a bottom or if it's sealed correctly. So we have intervening actions, we have an end state. Was the box received? Was it open? So it thinks through a lot of different things here. So it's just, I just found it interesting to just read all of this. And just, I don't think even I could think of all these sub problems or things that could happen to the to the ball or the box or the condition uh, just by so I think it, it did a very good job in thinking about every single detail here there's no mention of the time it takes for the box to reach New York 
So yeah, I thought it was pretty good. And then I follow up with great. Now look at each step and give me an answer with the highest probability where the ball is. And it starts off with thinking about the location of the ball. The ball starts here. You put the ball in a small box. At this point, the ball is inside the small box. However, given that the small box is missing bottom, if the box is held upright, the ball most likely would fall out. Uh, so you can see it kind of trinks to every step here. I just think that was nice. Journey to the postal office, the postal office, <laughs> journey to New York. And here it comes up like this highest probability conclusion. So given the information provided, the highest probability the ball fell out of the small box, either in your office or on your way to the postal office due to the missing bottom. Yes. So that is kind of what I wanted this language model to figure out. Uh, that, it, that something must have gone wrong here. So it didn't give a clear answer here. It said either in your office or somewhere in between your office. So I just said we need a final answer. I wrote answers, but I wasn't answer. All right, synthesizing the information and going with the highest probability, the ball is most likely in your office. Yeah, that is correct, right? If you go up again and look at the problem. So in the garage, I pick up the small ball and I grab it and I grab a small box that is missing the bottom. I don't place the ball in the box in the garage, but when I come into the office, I put the small ball into the small box. And my thinking is that when I lift up the box, then the ball stays in my office, right? And so, yeah, I think this is correct. And I think it did a very good job by sorting out like every step of our problem here. And without being 100% sure, because you can't really be 100% sure that the ball is in the, uh, got lost in the box in the office. Uh, but I think it did a very good job, and by using this chain of thought principle, we kind of saw the difference between just doing this zero shot with no extra information or steps added. Uh, then it said that the box was in New the ball was in New York, but now it's most likely in our office, what I think is correct. So again, I think this showed that thinking with this chain of thought principle that we can get better outputs from an LLM. So yeah, that is basically what I wanted to show you today. So this is gonna be a series coming up where I go to more of these prompt engineering principles that you can think about when you are using an LLM to solve a problem. And yeah, I got some other good episodes coming up, so just watch out for those. Uh, I don't have a timeline for them yet, but they're gonna be dripping out in between. So I'm gonna mark them like the perfect prompt principles, so you can just look out for that. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Check out some of my other videos up here if you enjoy this, and I'll see you again soon.